It is the touch well here on Y254. I'm still hanging out with Vitalis and Mike on everything that has been happening here in world of football. Let's talk about uh, the Champions League and the Europa League. But uh, some new information coming in is that now the Camp Nou is now Spotify Stadium. Mm. Wow, Spotify Stadium. It would be very hard for us to remember and recall that. One. But it is money for Barcelona, one club that... I should be neutral, but I don't like them. <laughs> 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 we'll talk about that in another. But as we're talking about European football and everything that happened during the week, it has been not been a very good season, not a very good year for the last two or three years. It has not been very good times for Barcelona mm -hmm. when you look at the way they have been performing. What, what, what do you make of them so far with the Javi Hernandez as the coach? Uh, I think... Uh, Barcelona has got a bigger problem than what we see on the field. And yes. uh, financial matters aside, I think they have too many egos to massage. Mm -hmm. And you see, when you have too many egos, yeah. uh, people that you want to sell and they say, I cannot be sold, I have a contract, then yeah. that makes it even worse in terms mm -hmm. of uh, the dressing room. Uh -huh, yes. So I think uh, we are going to, it's, it's very unfortunate that Barcelona is on the down downscale in terms mm -hmm. of their performance on the field, yes. which which uh, people like us, the fans, huh, mm -hmm. feel really, we feel like we are robbed in terms of uh, the performance. We expect, <laughs> yes. uh, there are those teams that we always expect that they'll be, uh, they'll be fortresses. For example, in yeah. uh, Spain, we have Madrid, Real Madrid, and we yeah. have Barcelona. In yes. England, we have uh, a few like Manchester United, and then uh, we uh, have uh, yeah. probably, yeah, and the rest. And yeah. then when you go to Italy, we have AC Milan, Juventus. So when you see Barcelona, the performance in terms, mm. and conceding so many goals yeah. in, a, in a competitive match, especially yes. Champions League, mm -hmm. that one is going to really affect their performance, even in the La Liga, despite yeah. them having a good run in the La Liga. So mm. I don't know what to say, but I really feel like... Uh, the problems of Barcelona does not necessarily em emanate from the field. Yeah. It emanates way before even mm -hmm. the, the, the financial issues and yeah. all that. So I think uh, Savi has a, a problem in uh, handling that dressing room because we have uh, players like De Jong, we have uh, Lewandowski, we have mm -hmm. big name players who have been uh, performing at the highest level and right now they are not performing. And that should tell us definitely there is an issue with the dressing room as well as the time of management, in terms of management of uh, the players themselves. Typical Manchester United fan. You mentioned all teams in England and never mentioned Liverpool. You just said Manchester United and the other teams. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even give you the card. But you look at uh, Barcelona, they have not been doing very well and they have gone on to the Europa League. For you, what do you make of them so far? I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Super excited. <laughs> Super excited. Yes. <laughs> because they robbed us of all the players that were supposed to come to Chelsea. Ah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm a very happy person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Europa, Europa yes. League is, is telling Kunde, Kalma <laughs> Kunde, Kalma Kunde. <laughs> yes. I remember when uh, yeah. Romero, the journalist to Barcelona, yes. he was pushing this mm -hmm. hashtag, Kalma Kunde, yes. to Barcelona. To Barcelona, yeah. Yeah. I, I hated that moment. Uh -huh. And I hated it when they took Rafinha away from us, the likes of Lewandowski. Yes. But I, uh, they made, they did us a favor by taking away Marcos Alonso. <laughs> but yeah. I hated every moment. Yeah. Um, I'm loving it. Uh -huh. uh, but there is a toxic situation yeah. in Barcelona. Uh -huh. They are in a financial crisis. Uh -huh. Spotify, their sponsor, they have them by the balls. Do you know, oh, do you, do, do, can you imagine a sponsor deciding that this, this when you're playing a big match, mm -hmm. we, will, we will put Drake's logo on your t-shirts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's, that, that they, have, means they have given that, you money. That means that they have, <laughs> no, no, that mm -hmm. means that they have mm -hmm. you by the balls. Uh -huh. you, it's either you accept it uh -huh. or they find you. Yes. They are in a financial dip. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very toxic. Mm -hmm. They all players deferred wages. Yes. The likes of PKs, Sergio Biscuits. Mm -hmm. And again, they were chasing away Frankie. A player, ah, Dijon. Yeah, a yes. player who, whom I think that mm -hmm. he gave all that he had. Mm -hmm. He's willing to give 
everything mm -hmm. he's willing to sweat blood for yeah. the catalan side mm -hmm. but as a los blancos fan <laughs> as a chelsea fan i am super and excited and very happy yeah <laughs> that they are playing in the Euro. Well, well tough uh, week it has been for fc barcelona finishing third in their group and now going down to the europa league we'll be seeing how they'll be performing there and who they are going to be paired with but uh, it was a very good one for Chelsea also with Graham Potter coming in and also topping their group and uh, with the last matches coming in, probably they'll make it to the uh, knockout stages of the Champions League. Graham Potter with Chelsea, very good manager that has come Graham out. Potter is a decent manager, yeah. extremely decent manager. If you want to know that Graham Potter is a, a manager with a vision and a kind of uh, a manager who decides how yeah. he wants his team to play, mm -hmm. Uh, let's get back to the match between Chelsea and Manchester United. Yes. Uh, that was the match that was tactically a uh, masterclass for Graham Potter, as well as uh, my greatest manager, Ten Hag. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> because, uh, you yes. see, Graham Potter realized that he had mm -hmm. made a mistake in mm -hmm. terms of uh, his selections and tactics. Yeah. And he didn't wait until, most manager would wait until uh, you sell through the first half and probably go up to the 60th minute before you make uh, changes. But yes. Graham Potter mm -hmm. decided to change the match. And yeah. you see, when he brought in Kovacic, uh, things changed. Yeah. And again, uh, we've, uh, we've seen that Graham Potter did not have uh, the European Champions League uh -huh. experience. Yes. I, I believe he had uh, his debut with Chelsea. Yes. But he's really gone into this uh, team Everybody was expecting that uh, Chelsea will have a downfall, mm -hmm. but he's unbeaten so far. And uh, I'm looking forward to him going further with that Chelsea team in the Champions League because they have a, they have a, good, uh, a good defense as well as uh, the mid that is yeah. very solid. Uh, but you know, you are manga, at a <laughs> yeah. uh, What do you think? Very good uh, manager that has come in for Chelsea and everything, but... Is it good for you guys? Do you enjoy his game, the way he sets up his team? Right now, I'm enjoying mm -hmm. that you're winning. Yeah. But we mm. <laughs> yes. I'm hoping, 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 I'm he he realized mm -hmm. that he made, he made a mistake and yeah. he was unremorseful because mm -hmm. of bringing off Marco Correa. Be actually, I was watching the game. Yes. As a, as a Chelsea fan, you know, it's it's very hard of, uh, for a typical Chelsea fan mm -hmm. to accept defeat. Yes. But I was watching the game uh, with uh, some fellow friends of mine and my companion. Yes. And I was complaining. And I was saying that Jorginho does not deserve to drive that midfield. We mm -hmm. need Kovacic right now. Manchester United had the best chance yeah. for the opening 35 minutes yes. with us before we, we brought on Kovacic. Mm -hmm. But after he brought on Kovacic, yeah. uh, the game, you could, you could see the atmosphere changing mm -hmm. and the rhythm changing. Yeah. And I think he has brought Mason Mount to life. Yeah. Ah, yeah, okay. He has brought him to life yeah. together with the likes of Kepa Rizabalaga, a uh -huh. uh, guy who, whom we bought for around 72 million quid. Yes. And he was underperforming, but when he was given the chance, he fought for his place. He has given some players uh, the, the, the motivation, yes. the legs of Kono Gallagher, mm -hmm. who only stood a chance for only two games under Thomas Tuchel. Yeah. After his red, I, we as the Chelsea fan base thought that he will never get yeah. a chance. But right now, some confirmation coming in my phone yeah. is that Kono Gallagher will be starting today for wow. the Chelsea team. Big one there for Chelsea as they also advance onto the knockout stages of the UEFA Champions League. We've got also Manchester City, Dortmund, they are fighting for their position. Man City still leading that group. Big one for them. Real Madrid also leading their group with 10 points. Sorry, there. Mm -hmm. Chelsea also leading in that group. Tottenham is in a group that any person at the moment can also go <laughs> onto that knockout stage. But Antonio Conte. Seems the Premier League is tough, one, but he's managing in the Champions League. Yeah, I think he's managing with a whisker because, yes. uh, as it stands, uh, yeah, he could end up at the Europa League as well. And uh -huh. the Europa League is going to be the best 
tournament compared to the Champions League. <laughs> Why? That, that might be true, actually. When yeah, you look because at the, you look at the, the teams, teams uh, yeah. that are coming down as well as the greatest team that are Mm. They are in already. <laughs> 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 but it's the reality. Yeah, it's the reality. The reality. Europa League might end up being the most no, watched it's, the competition. It, based it's going to be the most watched because yeah. uh, you don't expect uh, uh -huh. a tournament that has uh, Manchester United, um, Arsenal, Arsenal mm -hmm. Barcelona, the, the like of such teams, as well yes. as those ones that are coming down, for yeah. example, Ajax. AC Milan, uh -huh. Ajax. That is a tournament to look forward for. So uh, I'm looking at a, a situation where that uh, Tottenham has just to, to win convincingly yes. and beat Marcel. Yeah, if they real, even a draw yeah. would make them proceed, but mm -hmm. then they wouldn't go further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, they just have to beat Marcel, the likes of Alexis Sanchez. And yes. remember, Marcel has got so many players from London, yeah. the other team, uh, mm -hmm. that really fights in terms of who owns London. So, yeah, yeah. you expect a tough one. A big conversation there. But one thing that has actually impressed me when it comes to the uh, European Champions League, even in the, their league, has got to be Napoli. This is where Napoli is playing good for. But they are the way they defeated Rangers, comfortably dominating and everything. Against Liverpool. Yeah, it's a gem to watch in the Champions League. I, I am afraid of Napoli. Yes. And I'm praying to God that <laughs> yeah. Chelsea beats Dynamo Moscow uh -huh. uh, in their final match uh -huh. so yes. that we can be the group winners, uh -huh. so that we cannot face Napoli in the round of 16. Uh -huh. Because they have quality, the yeah. likes of Zielinski, the, the likes of Victor Simhe from Nigeria, mm -hmm. yeah. the likes of uh, Kvara, he has a very hard name, Kvara something, uh -huh. the likes of Diego Simeone's son, yes. Simeone. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's and called he's actually. Busy, yeah, very young mm -hmm. and energetic lad. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, uh, I'm afraid of Napoli. The team, the mm. team, they have a good chance. Mm -hmm. But you know what happens in the UEFA league? Mm. Uh, we were discussing about, we were talking about luck. Do you remember the Ajax, the Ajax team of 2020? 2020. 2020. Yeah. Oh, the were, likes of ZH. Yeah, yeah the likes of Tadic. Yes, yeah. The legs, the, lead, the mm -hmm. legs of the lead. Yeah. Do you remember they had beaten Chelsea four goals to mm -hmm. two? Before yeah. before the two time. sending offs, yeah, the two sending offs, which made Chelsea qualify for the mm -hmm. quarterfinals, I think so. Yeah, so they might be unlucky mm -hmm. either in the round of sixteen, yeah, or either in the in the knockout stages in the mm -hmm. quarterfinals. Well, a tough one there as we are going to watch the Champions League. It's also happening next week. We'll, those matches will be coming, and all the highlights will be live on Y254. And it is the touchline at Mirumbi Osorio's where you can find me on Twitter at. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah. You're not on Twitter, man? No, I'm not on Twitter. Oh, Instagram, guys. I'm not, I'm not on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. You're on Instagram. <laughs> Instagram, TikTok. Generation. So, wh wh what is your handle on Instagram? Uh, Marubo underscore V. Ah, you can find him on Instagram. I'm on Twitter as yeah. Simiu Wafula. Yes. At Simiu Wafula. Mm -hmm. On Facebook at uh, 4man001. <laughs> yeah. 4man001. Yeah. Uh, on Instagram, what yeah. is my handle? Simi underscore Wafula. Yeah. Yes. Well, Y254 is on all the social media platforms at Y254, but Mirumbi Osoro is where you'll find me on Twitter. And this conversation is also there. We are discussing everything that is happening when it comes to the World Cup. But a big shout out to my sister Diana Bocere, who actually graduated yesterday. This show is actually dedicated to her as she is actually enjoying her graduation. For me, it is the touchline. Maxwell Wasike is also telling me big guys from Langata are also watching at V1 and uh, they are enjoying what is happening and the discussion that we are having. And they are saying Manchester United is the team to watch when it comes to the Europa League. But big conversation there, but also We'll talk about that when we go there. But before we talk about the Premier League and everything, we've got to talk about also the Europa League. And one team that is impressing so far in the Europa League and also in the league has got to be Arsenal. There's nothing you can take away from Arsenal. They are really performing very well. Yeah, Arsenal is a great team. Yeah, yeah, it's a great team. It, yeah. it can only be beaten by the great team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. and um, yeah. yeah, that is the truth. It has been beaten twice. Huh? Yeah this season mm -hmm. and uh, i really like saka saka is, <laughs> yes. a, is a gem and mm. yeah I'm, I'm just hoping that uh, arsenal will 
now maintain the consistency because yes. they have already found uh, that they have gelled mm -hmm. in terms of uh, they understand their tactics, they yeah. understand every player seems to understand the role that they, they need to play. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, they always become suspects. And I don't know why, For I don't know, it's not hatred, but it's just the reality. Yeah. They don't know how to maintain the, to sustain a given kind of a form. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I fear that probably somebody has found a way of, uh, okay, let me not uh, wish I, I, them. I, I'm being reminded I was uh, uh, on our social media platforms at Y254, our social media manager put a photo there yesterday, of one famous actor. And uh, he was thinking that Arsenal will finish number six and even the ancestors don't know how it is going to happen. <laughs> but they are going to finish. <laughs> but I don't believe that is going to happen this season with the way they are playing. Uh, Mikel, Mikel is a great coach. Yes. And he's decent. Uh -huh. His tactics is equal poor. Uh -huh. But the same role in Yambia and GP. Yeah. At a particular <laughs> time. <laughs> even the ancestors. Uh, yeah. I'm afraid of Arsenal because... Uh -huh. Arsenal uh, after Manchester United Barcelona yeah. I hate Arsenal <laughs> because because mm. they have robbed us they mm. always beat us ah okay they always yes. beat us in mm. beat us in a great have you met this season so far yeah, in yeah. the pre seasons and they pre season but the Premier League not yet they give us a good thrashing yeah so uh, Arsenal uh, there was a wise man mm. and he said uh, Manchester uh, Arsenal will pick one and Matatu. Yeah. Gongo and Amatatu, or the yes. PSV uh -huh. <laughs> during the weekday. Yes. Uh, when I look at the PSV side, yeah. actually, before the halftime, they had scored two goals, which wow. were ruled off. Yes. Uh, they were ruled off. Arsenal had scored two. No, no, no PSV. PSV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Simons. And and Xavi Simons, yeah. he, for his goal, the second goal, yes. which was disallowed, I actually felt bad because he mm -hmm. danced mm -hmm. through the, the Arsenal defenders that yes. he scored. I am hoping that the Watapatikana, I am hoping, <laughs> I am hoping because, because as he said, they are playing yes. in a great way, yes. but they always fall. <laughs> well, Arsenal is actually leading their group there, even though they lost to PSV in midweek there by two goals to nil. They are leading in that group. Fenerbahce, Rene also in their group, they are doing very well. Real Betis, Ludogorets also playing very well as Jose Mourinho's team, AC Roma, at seven points also. They might limp onto the second there and also qualify. And Jose Mourinho doesn't like teams from Champions League <laughs> going to <laughs> Europa League. He says the, the, the shark failures of Champions League <laughs> now coming on to the Europa League. But you cannot take anything away from Jose Mourinho. Even with AC Roma, he might be playing safe and can win that trophy. Yeah, Jose Mourinho is a master tactician and yeah. you see, for you to be considered and to play at the highest level yes. and win all the trophies, I yeah. think he's won almost every trophy that is there to be won. If, yeah. If. And uh, Mourinho has got always this kind of a team. He builds a team that fights for him. Yes. Fights for him no matter what. You mm -hmm. might have a 90% ball possession, yeah. but one chance uh, would mm -hmm. always put you aside. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Mourinho always plays uh, psychological, reverse psychology, especially yeah. when he's going to meet a team that believes mm -hmm. is a better team in terms of uh, technical players as well as gifted players. Yeah. And uh, Roma this season is not performing so well. So, uh -huh. it's been uh, always, I would say, Bahati in all through their successes, especially in the, in the Europa as well as yes. the Serie A. Yeah. So, I think uh, much as Roma looks like a, a team that is shaky, it yeah. could actually shock many people because Mourinho knows how to win tournament. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he true. has he has that mm. test for tournaments, yes. and definitely he might want to add mm -hmm. this uh, mm -hmm. after the the Manchester United Europa League. Yes, yeah. So, never rule out Mourinho and Roma as well. It's good that you have brought in Manchester United. Shaky starts for them that they started with in the Europa League, even in the Premier League, but so far consistent with the way they are actually playing. And mm -hmm. comfortably defeating Sheriff at the Europa League. And that shows the depth that Ten Hag has, the team that he has at his feet, the great players that he has. 
Where do you see, where do you place them in the Europa League as we head on to the knockout stages? Right now, I am hoping that Manchester United can win the Europa League. Uh -huh, yes. And that Chelsea can win the UEFA, the UEFA Cup uh -huh. so that we can meet and play <laughs> against them uh, when you're playing the, uh, Super Cup, the Super Cup so that we may settle this beef. Uh -huh. if, if, if the 90 minutes won't be enough, we go uh -huh. to the extra uh -huh. time. Yes. The extra time won't mm -hmm. be enough. <laughs> yes. Penalty. Yeah. But Manchester United, uh -huh. ETH, Eric yeah. Tag, yeah. he's a great coach. Right uh -huh. now, uh -huh. I respect the guy. Yeah. You know, sometimes... Even though I'm a football fan and I hate much, I hate, I dislike <laughs> yes. Manchester United, you give credit to its due. Yes. ETH, he, he has, he has, he knows how to deal with the egos. Mm -hmm. uh, even though Cristiano is a bit frustrated by the way he has been handling him yes. of late and the media has propelled the fire against ETH, yeah. dropping uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, I think that this guy... He is the guy that identifies players. Nobody would have thought of a five foot four centre back. Mm -hmm. Centre back. Yes. That is Lisandro Martinez. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have thought of a guy going for mm -hmm. Malaysia in Feyenoord. Yes. Who, who knew Malaysia? Ah. I personally never knew Malaysia. Yes. Right now he's playing with Garnacho, mm -hmm. a very young chap, a very yes. young talented chap. Yes. Who is very technical, who has the foot foot ability and the skills to drive through the to drive through the defenders. So yeah. I think Eric Ten Hag, he deserves respect. Yeah. yeah. Well, big matches that are coming away this afternoon. Already 12 minutes into the early kick of March there, and we've got Leicester City at the King Power Stadium where the Man City, the game is still at 0 0, and we'll be giving you all the updates as they come in. Goal rush. We'll be having some of the big matches. FC Bournemouth will be home against Tottenham. Brentford will be playing at home against Wolves. Brighton Half will be playing against Chelsea. That is uh, Graham Potter going back home against Brighton. How is that match going to be? Emotions that will be in that stadium is a great, great match that you'll be have to be watching. Then Crystal Palace will be playing home to Southampton. And then Newcastle will be playing Aston Villa. Fulham versus Everton. And then big match of the night will be at Anfield where Liverpool will be playing Leeds United and it's also a big conversation there if a match might be fired after losing to Liverpool tonight so Jurgen Klopp you have someone's job uh, in your hands today so play safe <laughs> as we watch that one. And let's start off with the Leicester City Man City not a good start this season for Leicester with the Brendan Roy. also another man who is a uh, shaky with his job the way it is happening at man city my trouble him but how do you see them playing so far against man city uh, i think uh, leicester has always been a problem for man city but eventually uh, yes they are always softened and beaten so i don't expect anything less especially yes. now that man city is looking at this match yes that could potentially be a decider for them to get back on top of the league mm -hmm. so i think uh, brendan rogers uh, has had a good match the previous match. Yes. They bet, uh, I don't know which team, it was 4 nila, mm -hmm. And it was a decent match as well. Yeah. But Man City, ay, Man City is a difficult team. And I'm looking at uh, probably a 2 nil or 3 nil win ah, okay. for Man City. Well, this is a big one. There are big uh, conversation there for Brendan Rodgers and Leicester City. Not a good start for him. But he has got the players that can make a difference, the likes of Telemans, Madison. Yeah. Those are players who can make a difference. It's a game, but you don't expect them to go against uh, Man City today. Yeah. Uh, Leicester City, they have, they have been very shaky. Uh -huh, yes. Do you remember the starting of the season? They lost to Chelsea when they uh -huh. were 11 men against 10 men. Uh -huh, yes. When Conor Gallagher was sent off. Yeah. So I think uh, in a. And I believe that Manchester City, yeah. if they don't go play softball mm -hmm. against the Leicester side, yes. they have the better chances of winning against mm -hmm. Leicester City. They have the quality, yeah. they have the players to deliver, and mm -hmm. they have purpose, their coach. Yeah. But again, you've said that Leicester City, they have players that likes of Yuri Tillemans, Madison, yeah. who are great players, mm -hmm. and I, I never understand why Madison mm -hmm. doesn't want to get off the Leicester City side, because mm -hmm. Madison can flourish and shine 
in a big team like Manchester United. Mm -hmm. It's the same as Yuri Tillemans, where we saw in August, the summer window, uh, the legs of Arsenal, they were going for him. Yes. I think he has one year left in his contract, I'm not sure. Yeah. But I, I believe that they are quality players and they need to get off that team because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's demeaning their quality. Well, it's a big conversation there between Leicester City and Manchester City. A big game that is happening at the King Power Stadium. 15 minutes into that game and it is still 0-0. Some of the matches that we have been talking about, Bournemouth, Tottenham, big match, bad. Let's talk about Brighton versus Chelsea. Graham Potter going back home to the team that actually made him and also the team that he made. A lot of emotions for Graham Potter going back to that stadium. I love the story of uh, Brighton. Yeah. From the moment they sold their stadium and yes. all that, and then they rose to the level they are. Yes. And Brighton uh, plays a very beautiful football. Uh, they always are a thorn, uh, especially yes. for the big boys. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, they have failed to beat Chelsea the last three matches. Mm -hmm. And I uh -huh. believe that uh, they have ended in a draw, goalless draw and two one 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 all draws. Yes. And it is courtesy of uh, Graham Potter. He's always a, ta a tactical manager and uh, since he left, uh, Brighton have not been the same Brighton mm -hmm. as well. But I think the emotions, I'm expecting that uh, Graham Potter will be given a good reception because he, he, he yes. made Brighton. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm also expecting that uh, the likes of Trossard uh, would not yeah. fear Chelsea and uh -huh. Chelsea right now are having a problem of scoring more than two goals yeah. and Brighton can score two goals. Yeah. So I'm looking at a situation where uh, Chelsea might come out with a draw mm -hmm. uh, out of this match or Brighton might decide to upset their former manager as well and just say goodbye for that. Well, it's a big one there between Brighton and Chelsea. It is your team. What yeah. do you expect as a Graham Potter is going back home? Should we play Leicester for a year and let Brighton win? Yes, <laughs> we're, going back to, we're going back to the Amex. Yes. And as he said, yeah. uh, they have been adorned to the big boys. <laughs> they thrashed them yes. properly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in a good manner. Yeah. But this is a team that you know, uh, inside, outside, you know yes. how they play. Mm -hmm. I believe that I, I, I cannot disrespect the Brighton side. Uh -huh, yes. They are a good team mm -hmm. and they stand a chance. Yeah. They stand a chance. But Chelsea have, have not lost any game where Trevor Chaloba has started. Whoa. <laughs> if you're not aware that part, <laughs> yeah, they that, have not lost yes, any single the game. Premier League game. No, any. Any, any game. Any, any, so that will any, that'd be like your lucky charm. Any, any, yeah. yeah. So, so, so yeah. I am hoping uh -huh. that we will beat the Brighton team today. Yeah. But we cannot rule them out. We are going back to the Amex Stadium. We are going back to our place where we, it's filled with a lot of emotion, especially for the Graham Potter side. Yes. Together with the backroom staff. Uh -huh. uh, because yeah. Chelsea have, has gone on a shopping spree yeah. in Brighton. They have gone for their backroom manager, their mm -hmm. technical director. Yes. Yeah. So I believe it's a good match, and I'm hoping that we, we cannot afford to draw yeah. or maybe lose. The only thing we can afford to do is mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Win, win. And uh, the big boy, Manimes, I expect him to score today. Well, a big, a big confidence boost there for Chelsea as they play Brighton. This evening at 5 p.m. But we also got Crystal Palace lost the trainer to Everton last weekend. And they are playing Southampton, who had a very good draw against the Arsenal last weekend. That's a very good match to watch between these two sides. Who do you think will... Can Vieira go against the Hassanat? Uh, Vieira, Vieira is... A, for you to be a tactician in Europe, especially yes. in England, uh, mm -hmm. then you have to be... a a very decent one at that. Yes. And uh, also the Premier League. Yes, yeah. the yeah. Premier League, especially yeah. the Premier League. And yeah. I watched uh, a previous interview by Vieira, and then he was saying, he was asked about why he's the only black uh, coach, and he was like, no, we shouldn't look at me as a black coach. Let us look at me as a good coach yes. or a bad coach. Mm -hmm. And Vieira has really built that Crystal Palace, and mm -hmm. he's made it a, a team to reckon with, especially when they are meeting. There is something with Crystal Palace. Whenever they meet a bigger team, the conventional top six team, Zaha will always become a messy. A beast. Eh? Yeah, and <laughs> they will always frustrate you. Yeah. Now, he's going to meet, uh, he's going to meet Southampton, who have a, 
a confidence boost. Yes. Because uh, you see, uh, drawing with the uh, Arsenal yeah. is no joke. Especially, I watched that match mm -hmm. and that score, the equalizer that was called, it wasn't yeah. just a goal that came by. It mm -hmm. was a goal that was made. Yeah. And because of that, I'm expecting that Southampton has a, a decent uh, confidence boost going into Selhurst Health Park. And yeah. uh, I don't know. I don't know. I just have a feeling that uh, Southampton could uh, get a draw. Oh. Yes. A big one there. We'll be waiting to see how that one comes. But one team this season that is also coming in with big money and is troubling the tradition of big boys has got to be Newcastle, <laughs> where the, the way they are playing and Eddie Howe in that coach. Yeah. Got to love the way they are coming up and uh, they are knocking on the uh, top four position. Not, not everyone expects them to, them to be there. In Newcastle? Yeah. I Does money it. come with confidence? Money comes with confidence, <laughs> but, 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 but remember, that remember yes. they yeah. still have to stick to the financial fair play ah, situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have they have quality. Yes, they have quality. Mm -hmm. The likes of Kerry and Trippier. Uh, yes, they have Bruno Guimaraes, mm -hmm. who is wanted by Real Madrid at the moment mm -hmm. in Chelsea. Yeah, I, yeah, because he has become this mm. hot topic, this yes. hot guy. Uh, this this guy that every every is a great midfielder. Yeah. They have the likes of Miguel Amiro yeah. at the front. Yes, and they are saying that uh, Jack Grealish is a <laughs> shitty. <laughs> Miguel Amiro. They, they, they say it is a payback for him for saying that uh, is it Amiro? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it from Uruguay, Argentina that is not a, a good player and he cannot score goals, but he's the one who is scoring for Newcastle because and. Grealish is not scoring for City. Newcastle is a good team. Yeah. yeah New, we, we played Newcastle and it ended uh, a goal. Uh -huh, yes, goal. yes. And that match, I can tell you, that was a decent match. Uh -huh. It was a decent match. Eddie yeah. Hoy knows how to plan his team. And as you said, uh, yeah. with money comes confidence. If I have a million shillings in yes. my briefcase, <laughs> yeah. I would slap people. <laughs> I would slap people left, right, center. Yes. So I think uh, yeah. the Saudi are they the Saudi Arabians yeah. uh, yes, who have yeah. bought Newcastle yeah. and pumped in uh, more money? Yeah. They are building something, and Newcastle has always been a big team yeah. uh, until recently when yeah. they started becoming a mediocre team. But right now, I believe they are building. When you look at uh, Trippier, Trippier is a very, very decent player. Yes. You see, for someone of Trippier's caliber to come out of Atletico Madrid and play for Newcastle, yes. there is an intent yeah. that Newcastle is showing and proving. Mm -hmm. And it should be kind of a, a statement to uh -huh. the rest of yes. the Premier League because yeah. Newcastle are now fourth. Uh -huh. uh, they yes. are now fourth and they are strongly yeah. uh, contenting to, to remain there. So yeah. I, I can see... Newcastle might win because they have Callum, who knows ah, how to score as well. Yeah. yeah, he scored a decent goal against yeah. uh, Tottenham. He's somebody who fights until the last moment. Yeah. So. Well, another match there that uh, people will be watching very keenly has got to be Everton against the Fulham. It has been, looks to be a very good... Uh, no, no, before, before we talk about Everton and uh, Fulham also, uh, what are your thoughts? It was not a bad one for Steven Gerrard, the Aston Villa manager. What, what do good players need for them to win? Because uh, Steven Gerrard, great player, won the league with, uh, I think, Rangers. Rangers. But uh, the Premier League is not a very good uh, cup of cake for him. EPL. Yeah. It's not, it's not a cup of cake for anybody. Mm. Yes. You need to come here. Uh -huh. You need to show quality. Yes. You need to deal with these players, individual players. Mm -hmm. You need to be a tactician because they're great managers. Yes. And so for you to shine here, it takes courage and confidence. Mm -hmm. And if you're not shining, you gotta go. Yeah. You gotta go. Uh -huh, yes. You remember the legs of Lampard when he was brought on. And uh, he was not performing in the EPL, save his good results in the UEFA. He was yes. not performing in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. So you you got to go. I think Jared was a good team. He was a good coach. But yeah. Bado Ajaiva. Bado. Bado Ajaiva. You need yeah. to, for, you, for you to be a good coach in the EPL, you need to go through a certain route. Lazim mm -hmm. yeah. Wende you <laughs> come here and for the legs of Villa. Yes. The Villa, I, I remember when we were playing against Villa. Yeah. 
uh, you could hear that the fans they were frustrated ah, you could yeah. see yes they you could hear in the pitch the yeah. fans they were very frustrated yes you could see a, a player in the villa side yeah. but passing and you could mm. hear the fans shouting and jeering and saying yes. that you're not supposed to do that we want you to drive we need mm. this result yeah they were a bit unlucky because they were supposed to punish us yes the rushers mm. but Gerard uh, never performed to the expected level so yeah. his good results in the other season in the yeah. previous season he never performed to that you know Villa 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 has been has been also a good tone for the big boys yes. this season they have, mm. uh, this season they have been quiet and uh, co- coaches don't want to go to Villa Tuchel doesn't want Villa Pochettino doesn't yeah. want Villa who do you see is in the, the market boys. for the uh, that job uh, Villa I think they have uh, they have brought in uh, Emery. Ah, oh, have, yeah, Una uh, Emery, yes. Yeah, they have brought in a good manager. Yeah. I think Gerald lost it from the dressing room. The ah. problem with him was uh, man management. Yes. And you could see it from even uh, players like Ince. Ince was yeah. a, a decent striker. Yes. He used to score about 15 goals every yeah. every season. Buendia. Yeah, oh. em, Emiliano Buendia. He yes. was a decent uh, he's a decent player actually. Look at uh, Coutinho. Yeah. Those are decent players. Look at uh, this did, South did, did, did he, those players not rise up to the occasion for Steven see, Gerrard when, because when, good players Steven Gerrard is fired the next game you are playing yeah, while you are winning. Then yeah, it, it's like those players never rose up for <laughs> Steven Gerrard. I think his man management was a problem and yeah. there, were, there must have been a uh, dressing room issue. Yeah. You remember he even came out and said there is no problem. Yeah. at the start of the season <laughs> when uh, I don't know which player I don't remember the player but uh, yes. he mentioned that there was a problem in the dressing room mm-hmm. and then uh, he played it down so you see whenever information leaks from the dressing room uh-huh, about yes. a manager yeah. those players will put you under the bus definitely yeah. and I think that is uh, the situation that uh, Gerald found himself in yeah I'm looking at a new manager's bounce. That 4-0 yeah. uh, win against, uh, was it Brentford? Uh, yes. Was a new manager's bounce. Yeah. And Emery is a decent uh, coach yeah. as well. Yeah. And I, I, I feel like he'll have a play to, uh, a, a part to play for today's match. Yeah. Uh, possibly they might not win, yeah. but they wouldn't lose. Well, talk about waiting for a fixture between Aston Villa and Arsenal because they let Emery go for... Uh, Mikel Ateta to take over. The latest clash there will be Liverpool versus Leeds. Big one for Liverpool. What a loss they had last weekend against Nottingham Forest. I I was watching that game somewhere and the place went standstill. From, I think, the 70th minute Mm -hmm. to the last, everybody was rooting for Nottingham to win this game and they won it. Looking like it's not a good season for Jurgen Klopp and Liverpool. Uh, can I tell you a fun fact? Yes. Do you know that in the seventh season of Klopp's uh, reign, there's always a misfortune? His in every club that he goes to. In the seventh season at yeah. Lens, uh-huh. they were relegated. Uh-huh. In the seventh season at Dortmund, uh-huh. yeah. they failed to qualify for the Champions League. Whoa. And this is the seventh <laughs> season. <laughs> of the younger club at Liverpool. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, He's kind of a bit unlucky. Uh-huh. He's kind of a bit unlucky. Yes. It's fit against Jürgen Klopp. Mm-hmm. And he might... You remember last time when you asked me a question? Yeah. And I said, family, that if he doesn't perform... Yes. Gotta go. <laughs> Who is going to come in? And it looks like he's Gerard, not performing. Don't, Gerard, we don't know. We don't know. Gerard. Gerard. Yeah, yeah. We don't know. But Leeds, yeah. Leeds is quite a peculiar team. Yeah. They stand up to the occasion against the big boys. Yes. And this season we have tested them. Uh-huh. And they gave us a good beating. Yeah. They gave us a good beating. Uh-huh. Uh, they have the legs of Jack Harrison. Uh-huh. Uh, Patrick Bamford is bouncing back uh-huh. to his career. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they have the legs of Rodrigo. Yeah. They have the legs of this young man called uh-huh. Sinistera. Yeah. I think uh-huh. Leeds, yeah. they, can, they can raise up to the occasion. Mm-hmm. But Salah is a sneaky boy. Wow. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> Mike, yes. uh, I've got to hear. Let, let's finish with you. Cristiano Ronaldo coming in for Manchester United in the Europa League. Might be coming back now. Is he discovering that it's my time now to go? Uh, He's walking away during the Tottenham game. 
Yeah, that was a uh, very disrespectful. Yeah. Uh, I love Cristiano Ronaldo because uh, yeah. of the history that uh, he's conquered in the world of sports. Yeah. As well as uh, the history that he has uh, yeah. with uh, the greatest yes. Manchester. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> the great so Manchester. it was very unfortunate to yeah. see because he's a mentor. Yes. And so many young players look up to him. Mm -hmm. And uh, when a coach puts you or wants to sub you in, huh? yeah. you play because you are a player. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really love the way uh, mm -hmm. Eric Ten Hag has handled the situation, despite yeah. the mm -hmm. pressure from the media as well. You see, yes. media will always blow up things. Yeah. I love that. That's uh, work. I, I love the way <laughs> Eric Ten Hag has uh, taken decisions into yes. his own hands. Mm -hmm. He's managed the player. And mm -hmm. uh, I was watching the press conference and he said that they had a very positive conversation. Yes. That means he managed the situation properly. Yeah. And eventually, Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. uh, really looked for his goal and he scored yes. during the Europa League uh, outing, yeah. which was also a good goal. It was a goal out mm -hmm. of uh, sheer passion and yes. hard work. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, and he was asked whether Cristiano could score another 18 goals. Yeah. And uh, Eric Ten Hag said, yes, it's possible because uh, yeah. he finds himself in a good position as well as he's a decent, decent greatest of all time player. Yes. So I'm looking at a situation where you see Manchester United playing against West Ham, a yeah. David Moyes team that mm -hmm. uh, has never won. David Moyes as a coach has never won against uh, Manchester United at yes. Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. And he would come to this match with the feeling that I need to overturn that. And Manchester United uh, of late, we've been uh, solid, uh, not really solid at the back, but in the midfield, yes. we've been very solid and yeah. uh, Casemiro has helped so much. And we've created also chances, but we've not been converting them. So I'm looking at a situation where mm -hmm. Eric Ten Hag would want to get uh, two chances that can be yeah. converted into goals and yeah i really want cristiano ronaldo to mm. play and score well that's where we come to the end of the touchline here uh, vitalis how do you rate uh, mike today He's an excellent football analyst. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he should do 2.2. Yeah, 2.2. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester, Manchester United yeah. versus Chelsea. Chelsea. He's, he's, yes. He's, he's talking about the greatest <laughs> team in yeah. England. Yeah. And uh, 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 you're talking yeah. about Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> in London. Well, in England. Vitalis, Mike, thank you for coming here for the touchline. I'm Robert Rosoro. For everyone who has made this production a success, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your viewing here on Y254.